Rahul already said everything that needs to be said about AIF. One of the things that AIF has done, perhaps better than almost all charities, is all of the things they do are really useful to the people who, they've, who are their customers. And so we've obviously partnered with them because we, the one thing that we look at really clearly is it, the things that you're doing, are they really benefiting the people as they need them? Or is it just the fashion of the day? We are still working with AI because they've done such a great job. One of the things that we've done beyond that, which I'm sure will work in the future with AIF, is we created this invention shop. The purpose was to create inventions that will forever change the bottom half of the world. And today I'm going to sort of give you an idea of the first one. We've actually created four. The first one we've created is a hybrid bicycle, which if you pedal for one hour, you have electricity for 24 hours. It's probably, it's probably the most stunning uh, invention in 100 years, simply because it targets the half of the world that nobody invents for. Somebody joked that it was, it was like creating you know, what Edison did, that it was like electricity, except the fact that it is electricity, the bottom half. Half the world has electricity either two, three hours a day or none at all. And you have to understand that it is one of the main things that keeps the poor poor. All inventions in the last 100 years require, almost all inventions require power. So we've really just taken half of the world and said, look, we're going to make nothing for you. This is going to be an enabler for so many different things. For example, we've talked about education, but one of the huge areas in education is the internet. Now, if you don't have electricity, you don't have the internet. All knowledge, all of that knowledge is gone. So in order to bring the people out of poverty, electricity is a must. The interesting part is what we've done is create something that It's not like solar. The problem with solar is, one senior politician said to me, solar is like a roof in the making. Because what happens is it breaks down, now you need a PhD to come fix it. This device is so simple that it can be repaired by a, a bicycle repairman, which every village has one. So one of the criteria for invention for the poor is you need to be able to fix it. As I think Rahul pointed out on something, there was a well that broke in 1960 something, and 50 years later it's still broken. Well, it was the wrong invention. You have to make stuff that they can fix and go. We expect that there will be a million businesses started because of this. Because once you have power, you have little factories everywhere. It goes towards health, now you can do things like clean water, you can, it goes towards education, it goes towards health. So all of these things, the enabler is electricity. And then a few other things we've created, that actually there's a documentary coming out at, in the fall sometime that will actually show you these things that we've, uh, we've been working on for several years. The idea was to create stuff that will fundamentally change the lives of the poor. And there's really only two or three things that are fundamental to everything. 
One is energy, and the other is water. We've also created two devices. One, it costs about 400 bucks. Oh, by the way, the, the, the device for electricity, um, I think we've gotten it down to that simple so that the cost is going to be somewhere near about 100 bucks, which means anybody everywhere can have electricity. The other couple of things we've done is water, where we've created the device. It costs about 400 bucks. It can clean about 200 gallons an hour of dirty water that's bacteria-ridden. And it costs only $400, and there's no replacements, no parts to go bad for three years and then you have to replace the filter. So every village can have something that they can have clean water. Now, I, I kind of mentioned that, okay, these are useful things. What I think that are not useful is there are things that go by fashion every year. You know, as you know, the word sustainability comes to mind. That's a great fashionable word. Or this year, apparently, toilets. Toilets are very fashionable. The problem with toilets is when you go to a guy in a village and he doesn't have a job, he doesn't have food, and you say, we're going to give you a toilet, he looks at you and he says, thanks, okay, another fool. Because it's from a rich man's perspective. Because you go to a village, it smells. So you say, oh, well, we got to give this guy a toilet. It's just nonsense. So we need to do things which are useful, which will make a difference that will last. We've also created, um, I think there's probably too many things, but we've also created some uh, desalination equipment, which is the best, at this point, the best in the world, which will address problems not just in India, but worldwide, California. Uh, we're just installing this year, this month, in California to test the device. Something that can actually produce enough water to take the world's needs in water. So I just wanted to announce at least the electric device, which is the coolest thing you've seen. Because, you know, everybody that comes and sees it, all the senior guys have come and seen it, everybody says, I want one for my house. Could you please put a calorie counter on it? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. However, the difference it's going to make, I mean, I've talked to some of the leaders in India, and people are pretty much stunned that if you could do this across India, you change the country forever, especially at that price level, at that cost level. Uh, the government subsidizes more than that um, in energy today. And so we've got some other things coming up that are going to deal with water issues and uh, even deforestation, uh, things are done at the fundamental level where they affect everything. There's a lot of people say, well, no, we do health care, we don't do water. In reality, if you're doing large-scale health and you're not doing water, it's all nonsense. More than 50% of the beds in the world, hospital beds in the world, are occupied by people who have waterborne diseases. The fundamental here is clean water, not more hospitals. So we have to start working at the very fundamental level, where things 10 years from now just don't stay the same. It has to be where it makes a difference that's going to last 100 years. Anyway, that's all I've got. That's what we're doing. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Mr. Manoj Bhargava, everybody.